today I'm going to show you how to make hypertufas. This is a hypertufa here. Now this one is quite old. It's about 10 years old. But you can see the concrete here. This was done in a cardboard box. And uh, the plants have actually adhered to the outside of it. It's quite porous when you make it. And so plants will literally grow all over the top of it and down the sides and around the bottom if you let it. This leaf here is an actual uh, hypertufa leaf that I made uh, from a gunnera leaf that was out of my mom's garden. It's pretty heavy, it probably weighs about 50 pounds. But what you do is you just line a hollowed out indentation in the soil with a garbage bag, fill it with hypertufa cement, and then lay your leaf on top to get the pattern. And you can curve it if you wanna dig a, a steeper sided, um, indentation then this would become a bird bath. Aside from doing the leaves you can use anything for molding uh, hypertufa. If you want to make a shallow uh, bowl with a design on it all I did was um, glue a piece of textured uh, shelf liner on the bottom of a meat tray and when I pack the hypertufa around it that will be the design on the inside. Now if I put the hypertufa on the outside of the tray then this will design will be a whole different thing or you could do it on the inside it's up to you this one I'm going to do today it's going to be a bird bath it's a bowl that I picked up at a thrift store now I could do the inside but I like the design on the outside it's a little textured so I'm going to pack the hypertufa cement on that this I've never tried before um, but it's a ball that I covered with duct tape or duck um, screen tape I guess it's called and uh, I'm sure that's the technical term, you could ask the hardware guys. And uh, this is just a little bouncy thing. My grandkids, I was terrified they were going to fall on their face with it, so I stole it and now I'm going to make a cement thing. This is another mold that I'm going to use and I just glued some little hearts on the inside. I don't know if you can see that, but that'll create a heart-shaped design on the inside of the container. And once the cement is in there, I will push that into the center and that will be the base for where the plants will go. This is another bowl that I'm going to try and do a design. Now you could pack it around the outside and then this design would show up. But I'm going to line the inside with uh, hypertufa concrete and make a bowl in there. This is another one that I'm going to do. So I just took an old Tupperware container I had that I didn't like the lid and I glued some of that in a stripe so it will hopefully leave that impression on the hypertufa once we make it. So that's it, let's go mix. So we're gonna mix uh, hypertufa concrete and um, I'm lucky enough that I have a cement mixer but you can mix it in a wheelbarrow. Uh, mixing it in the wheelbarrow is probably easier if you use smaller quantities but for our purposes in the cement mixer I'm using five gallon pails because we're gonna do a lot. So um, before we get started, I'm going to put a mask on because the uh, cement gets quite um, airborne, I guess, and uh, it can be, thank God for COVID, eh? I have this mask. So I'm going to put the cement in. Oh, geez, that weighs a lot. put in perlite, equal quantities of Portland cement, perlite or vermiculite. So that's the cement, the perlite, and now peat moss parts of peat moss. Okay. We've got the cement mixer in a better position. I can probably take this off. And I'll just turn it on. And that'll 
start mixing. Mixing. And we'll start. Yeah, I shouldn't have taken the mask off. <laughs> Adding the water. You want to watch it as it's mixing. Why is it not mixing? I haven't made this for a long time and I forgot the step that you have to put water, a little bit of water in first before you add the ingredients, otherwise the concrete sticks. So we managed to get it all mixed up properly. It's a pretty good consistency, it's shapeable. So um, I think we're at the right um, mixture. So you'd put water in and then your concrete perlite peat moss, mix it around, add water until you get it to the right consistency. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to dump it into a wheelbarrow and start building stuff. Okay, so first thing I'm going to try and do is my bird bath because that's my priority. And I'm just going to take the concrete and slap it up against the side. But before I do that, I just remembered you want to spray it with some baking spray because it'll be easier to get off the mold if you want to use it more than once. Which I think I might do because I might make a couple of bird baths. Maybe I'll do them for gifts or maybe I'll do this as a fairy garden, yen garden, zen garden or whatever. So basically you take the stuff, and I'll get this all over the place, and you slap it on. So there's the first, and it's going to come all the way down. Now this might take a little while to cover this. So after patting this all over, um, I realized that the mix is just a little bit damp, but that's not a problem because it's holding very well on there. But what I'll do later is I might go around and I'll just um, sculpt that up a little bit once the concrete um, dries a little bit more. And you want to get it, well that's not quite an inch thick, but um, I think it'll be fine. I don't think you have to go too thick. Um, because it's not going to be uh, holding dirt, this is going to be just uh, a bird bath. So I might put a little bit more on, we'll see. So this one is the one with the heart impressions on the inside. So I put a little bit of hypertufa in there and uh, just to get the bottom going. So I got a little bit on the bottom, then I'm going to set this cup in here. And I'm going to fill in the sides with more cement until I have it filled up to where I want it to be. And that'll be my second one. It's actually quite quick to do. Um, you don't want to take too long anyway because the, the concrete starts setting after a while. But that's when you can start um, fixing some of the sides and things like that. move the top off a little bit. Now that one I didn't spray so that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. So that one's done. This is the meat tray and I'm just gonna slop some hypertufa in there and I'm just gonna bring it up to the edge where I want it to be. And this could be like a little bonsai planter or succulents maybe. Succulents are so in right now. It's kind of like a, a wet clay. You just got to play around with it and jiggle it a bit. And... And you don't really care what the inside looks like so much as the outside because uh, that's where your dirt's going to go in here. So that's that one done. Nice. Well, this is the same meat tray as the last one I did. I put the hypertufa on the inside. This time I'm going to put the hypertufa on the outside.
Let's pat it around. Now you want these to look rustic. You, this is not um, going to look like your art nap planter. This is going to look like an old Venetian garden planter or something from another century planter because um, you want that rustic look. Now I've seen where people take the outsides of these and um, they push seashells in or um, some kind of design later on that they want to um, have as an impression. I've also seen people put blobs to make legs but um, I'm not going to do that. I just like the organic shape. And this is a bit loose, I have to admit. Um, it's slurrying down a bit. So I'll go around and pat it back up later. Which you can do. See how it's already starting to pack up a little bit better on the sides? See how it's loose here? That'll all firm up a little bit. Okay, so we'll try the next shape. Okay, so this one I'm going to spray the inside again because I want to maintain this mold. Um, it's a bit too rigid to peel off. If you were just using some um, ice cream container or milk carton, you wouldn't worry about it because you could just cut it off with an X-Acto knife. But these forms are kind of a nice shape, so um, I'll try and see if I can't slide it out with the baking spray. Oh yeah, it's quite s sloppy here. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then I'll try and pull it up the sides a little bit more. Okay. Well, I'm trying to do this, but it's kind of sliding. I was worried about that. The top's good, but. Yeah, but you want it fairly thick, right? So yeah. it's on this one, put more on. Yep. Okay. Keep putting more on and push it up. Maybe with that little lip at the bottom, it would catch it and hold it in there. But yeah, it's not going to stay on until, until it's drier. Well, this. So now that it's had a chance to sit, you can see some of the water's pooling around the bottom. So the water's run out, and and I can pull up some of the sides that were a little bit too wet. Um, you have to be patient. And uh, you can see on Elaine's that hers is starting to slump down, but it's actually okay because that bottom part is providing a base for her to build the center part that's where the white's showing. So if you just let it sit, it'll okay. it'll firm up a bit, okay. like this one. Because be this one's starting to firm up. So in this one, what I did is I, I just um, filled in one side of it. I thought maybe that I could make like a little charcuterie um, cheese board or something out of concrete. I don't know. It's an experiment. Um, maybe it can be a plaque to hang on the wall and I can put some house numbers on it. Or if it looks good, maybe I can make some signs for my garden, you know, describing my plants or funny little sayings, although that's a bit catchy, but doing a repair job or not a repair job we're filling in Elaine's pot and if you touch cement and move it too much and slap it you'll create water coming out and that just makes it sloppier so what you want to do is just gently move it and attach it and then go on and then we'll, we'll just keep adding to it as we go a little bit more And you want it fairly thick because this is going to be a planter. So just gently pull it up. There, you're starting to get your shape now. So 
these are taking a little bit longer to set up and um, I'm gonna keep working at them to pull them up and make them a little firmer and finish them up if you want to see what they look like once they're all done they do take a couple of weeks to dry um, you wrap them in a garbage bag and let them cool slowly or cool evaporate slowly and uh, once they're hard I'll be planting some um, Zen gardens into them and uh, we'll do a workshop on that and teach you how to plant them and make them look very cool so I came back to Sue's a few days later just to see how the hyper tufas turned out and they look wonderful I can't wait until we do our next workshop where we get to plant them it's gonna be so much fun thanks again Sue